Or kind of though, so quick to almost like be a bit like doomsday on like yeah, Smash Ultimate sometimes. Obviously, yeah. we've been playing this game a long time, you know. The the interest obviously has dwindled a little bit, but it's tournaments like yo, know, this is like it's tournaments like Regen 2024, where we you know get to experience like you know some different player styles coming out, and it's just yeah, it's an exciting one. Yeah, obviously the the game has not died yet. There is still so much interest coming out from it, uh, from all over the world, and. Tournaments like this, like UFA, like other majors in Europe, all over the world, make it happen. Yeah, 100%, Smart, 100%. You know, obviously, like like you said, man, events like UFA that make all of this happen. So, obviously, a big shout out to everyone who has uh, allowed this event to happen. Obviously, UFA um, sponsored by uh, big, the big guys at Decathlon and BenQ for providing all the wanters. This is actually um, Decathlon's first esports event that they're, that they're sponsoring, which yeah. is crazy because obviously they're all about outside, all about that fitness as well, while we're inside gaming. So, you know, Decathlon encouraging everyone to go outside, you know, get a bit, a bit of fresh air, you know, do, do a bit of exercise, you know. So, yeah, big shouts to them for sponsoring the event, man. and. Uh, yeah, no, these guys are going to be getting into it. another Snake player versus a Mario. Yeah, this is really interesting, actually, as we do dive into game one of our next set here. Again, Mario Snake, I mean, really an interesting oh, yeah. one. But oh, button check. Okay, cool. Right. I don't, I don't. <laughs> I you know what? Yeah, I actually, that guy. Yo, I appreciate I you. it. Yeah. I it's hard to tell bro, sometimes. <laughs> the, start, the start of our block, my block was coming. That, bro, we sat down. These guys headphones on. They started. The game, oh my so god! We had no time. No, to go, give us time, man. <laughs> Shout out, man, with the Mark Evans tag as well. Uh, that's my guy still. Uh, appreciate that. With a little button check that, they, that they're doing here. But Mario Snake, man, both in the matchup. Yeah, the, it's, I was having to think about this one because I feel like it's another interesting one, kind of similar situation, a teeny bit with like Sonic, where like again. Like, you've got to get a close-up, you know, eventually. And Mario has to do that way more than Sonic does. And it's going to be, I think, really interesting to see how, you know, the Mario deals with, like, this onslaught of projectiles, like, training hits with a grenade. But, of course, like, the biggest tool, I think, that, like, obviously, Mario has over a character like Sonic. Never mind, we're not seeing a snake at all. <laughs> he bought and checked with Snake just to pick Banjo. That is, that is devious work. You know what? I'll... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's, that is hilarious. I can't lie. Wow. I mean, they both, you know what? They both have bombs of their own, you know? Yeah, yeah. they still have bombs. I mean, you know what? This still allows me to segue into what I was going to talk about. Something that I think is going to be the key matchup, no matter if it's Snake or it's Banjo, Cape. <laughs> That's side B for Mario. I think it's going to be really, really useful. Obviously, just for being able to reflect a projectile away, I think it's going to be really, really good. Yeah, no, yeah. Getting the Kazooie Blaster. Out here, man, you've got uh, Mr. Mark Evans Mokra out here already, you know, 60% onto, uh, onto Bear out here. I think, I think we should have seen it coming with the, the tag Bear. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, Bear could have also been referring to like the camo yeah. or on Snake. But you could never know with tags these bear, days, yeah, honestly. Yeah. Bear, Banjo, <laughs> Kazoo, okay, fair enough, man. But still, nonetheless, 69% onto Bear. Nice stuff from Mokra so far. And, uh, but no, Bear, slowly making a comeback here along with his first stop. Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting because, like, again, we're trying to see, like, Bear, like, do this, like, you know, sort of this zoning game, but, like, the Mario is just constantly in his face there. Yeah, you know, obviously, like, and this is where it gets scary as well because, obviously, the Mario, as soon as it gets in close to you, that's where it becomes, like, absolutely terrifying. The moves, like, obviously, the up smash, like, the back air, you know, I mean, things like up tilt that can lead into up airs, into up bees, and it's terrifying prospect to face. So Bear is, like, you desperately trying to just, like, keep it away as much as possible before you lead it to somebody like the Wonder Wing that I was just about to mention. Absolutely crazy. Great. Oh my god! And there's the upbeat! What a snipe coming out from Mokra. You know, very crazy stuff. That Mokra had the lead to begin with. You know, had such a nice lead. Got a 60% lead on Bear. Bear making that comeback in that first and eventually, eventually taking it. And now Mokra catching, sniping him with that upbeat. It's looking a lot more even, I say, as Bear's got a Mokra off stage, you know, and just getting blown up by the bombs, but Mokra is struggling right now. Yeah, again, these grenades are just coming out in full force right now, actually. But of course, then, as we said, Rekka, the Mario finds an opening, leads into his up airs, and suddenly that's a lot of damage being put on. I like the up B just out of shield there, just, you know, as a bit of a kind of like a just interruption to the side B with the cape coming out as well to deflect those grenades, which have been so useful so far. But that's a lovely bait. I love that. Bear there, because you know, saw that Mario was going 
before the side B came to the fact of the uh, grenade away, so just went for the Wonder Wing, just and go yeah, through it. Um, an Genius. immediate adaptation from there, you know, because obviously that came to us, that just happened like a couple of seconds before. To be able to adapt from a fight like that, yeah, but truly, truly good moves there from there, and an amazing thing, like you said, Smart. But still, you know, Mokra has, uh, has to take the second stock here if he wants a chance of winning this game one. It's looking quite tough right now. It's so tough as well because obviously, like after this, you're still going to deal with you know things like the side B. You've got five more uses of it after this stock is gone, but you still got to get through two more Wonder Wings. But even before that, and Bear can't just throw that out at any moment. Definitely so, definitely so. Yeah, he's got the grenade now, and oh my god, it blew up in his face. Still 53% on Mokra right now. Bear's looking chilling, and I love the bait, bro. Bear has these baits down, man. Yeah, he, he's, he's in Mokra's head after He's absolutely in his head. Like, literally, I mean, this is such a good position for Bear to be in right now. Yeah, he's got so, basically got all the tools in his hand. Another Woo! Wonder Wing left to go as well, which he can just dish out at a moment's notice. Bro, I can't lie. Even at the end then, he does the, beat, the, the Briegel Blaster and then immediately cancels it into the side. <laughs> um, take, puts it away into the side. Because obviously, you know, you see the Briegel Blaster, we see Mokra just above Bear, ready to rain down with an aerial, but the side B, the bait, well, he has all these baits on deck at all time. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's it's honestly, it's genius like counterplay to deal with the Mario as well, like where you, obviously like you're, you're debating them into doing certain things, as you said, like Becca, you know, and then just like being able to dish out like a powerful tool like that side B, really just genius little muscle play there from, uh, Bear to come out and is exactly why we are one game up on Bear's side but we'll have to see what Mokra can do to fight back right now. Yeah, well, I mean, he started off the game very nicely in game one so I wouldn't be surprised if we still see something similar but at the same time he might be a little bit shook of the antics that Bear pulled during that game one but like you said Mark, we'll have to see the grenades are falling being thrown out as well. Mokra trying to find something with these five trying to get something started here. Yeah, again, like Bear now, uh, really just starting to run away a little bit. But you're getting a lot of damage on here, but we know what Mario can do as soon as he finds a way through. The upbeat, I like that again. Like we talked about it before, it's just good, like, you know, get off me tool, just like a kind of like a warning shot almost uh, to just say, you know, I, you know, I'm still alive, I'm still kicking, I can do my moves. But again, you just got to, like, stop the momentum that Bear has. And, like, the side B, you know, it's, you can see that, like, your know, Bear is starting to wind up these Wonder Wings. But then that's what Mario does. That's what he does. To fight back, he sends him dunking down below. That's the scary part as well, man. Because it wasn't even like that, that bear was at such a high percent, but uh, 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 you know, up there into that bear, it just kills so early. Bear couldn't do anything about that, but that lead that that Mokra now has, it could potentially you know lead him to win the entire game. It just, it just depends on how he plays from here on out. It's so interesting as well because now like Mokra can actually play a bit more of a defensive style where he can basically just wait for Bear to commit to something and basically in the meantime just literally connect all of his up airs and just get a whole lot of damage going because you know, even if he drops his stock he's already done triple digits right now. Yeah definitely. Oh okay hold on. Very scary right now from Bear. And I feel like ooh, still got 100% though on the Bear though Mokra. You know, I don't think he should be too scared around. Oh, reflects the, the grenade into Bear. But catches the side B as well. Honestly, Mokra, completely different from that game once, Mark. I'll tell you what I love, though, Rekka, is that I feel like Mokra has been playing around the Wonder Wing brilliantly in this game. He has literally been, like, baiting it out at so many different times and then been able to completely maneuver around it. And it has been so pivotal in this matchup so far. And this is why, like, Mokra is, like, looking quite healthy in the second game here. Only, like, one Wonder Wing left on Bear's side as well while sitting at 157. That's the last one, if my counting is correct. Oh. So that is that, that big threat is already gone. Yeah, definitely. It's gone now, but still... Uh, has oh, my God! Back in. I was just going to say, he has to focus on getting back in, because if he can't, that lead he's got is going to be gone. So, Bear, now, with the stock lead, he doesn't have the Wonder Wing online, but still, he's he's got the lead now. We've seen how far he can take this, even without the Wonder Wing uh, from that last game as well. Back to, that's not gonna kill from center stage. 194 onto Bear. I mean, this is now, like, it's a completely shifted. You know, suddenly, like, Moko is looking so healthy, and now, 
struggling to actually find this final hit to take this the the stock away and then even after that you've got to still good deal with five more wonder wing uses and a final stock to deal with all of that while still taking chip damage from this stock alone yeah and he's just able, unable to find these, these grabs on multiple instances now even before he lost that stock and just exploded i feel like we could be seeing a lot more of the, the, the cyclone coming out from what you know in, in a bit to you know sort of stop bear from getting so zealous with these approaches but still, um, Bear, 23% only, that Wonder Wing, I feel like getting a little bit too excited with it. You know, I feel like he's being a little bit more careful now, but still, 73% onto Mokra, if you go anywhere. This is the thing I do need for Bear to like kind of slow down on a little bit as we do enter this like end game of the second uh, game here. That oh, I feel oh, like he does need to slow down on these Wonder Wings. He's been a little bit like too trigger happy, as you talk about. We've got three left. Uh, thankfully, he's able to live from that forward there. Not going to be falling down to, uh, below, but that's been a lot of damage, and suddenly he's even right back up, Becca. Definitely. Oh my god, there we go. The cake trying to be thrown out once again by Mokra. Fireball confirmed into that grab there. Beautiful stuff. And off stage. Hold on, trying to go for the stage fight. Two and one more. Wonder Wing left in Bear's arsenal. It can go either way, folks. It literally, I feel like Bear needs to use this last Wonder Wing to actually take the stock, to take the game. You can't just throw it out right now. I think if that last one goes, that is such a powerful tool, just immediately removed from your arsenal. Meanwhile, Mongo is just going to run up and do it. The up smash there, landing and taking that second game away. Excited, excited with that Beagle Blast as well, I have to say that. You know, I feel like um, Bear just got a little bit too close there with that Beagle Blast and kind of set himself up for failure with that, um, after getting killed off, killed with that up smash. Way too close with that Beagle Blaster, got knocked away. It's unfortunate, but um, honestly, I feel like either player could win him. Yeah. Um, take the set, I mean, it, it's just gone back and forth so many times more. Oh, completely. I mean, like, it, it's, it's impossible to call, as you say, that. Like, yeah. I, I feel like the one thing that I want to see from Bear especially, though, is just to, like, slow it down a teeny bit, especially to just be a little bit kind of less trigger-happy on those Wonder Wings. I feel yeah. like the, the first few stocks of Game 2, we saw Bear just, like, literally throwing them out, and Mokko was just able to avoid every single one, and Wonder Wing is too useful at all to you know, remove all of your uses of it. 100%, 100% there, Smart. And I'm going to start things off, you know, I feel like he's, he's paying, paying a little bit more keep away now. You know, using the platforms to sort of navigate, sort of circle um, Mokra here. 41% um, onto uh, Mokra right now, but there we go. Um, Mokra is finding himself in, in here. A little bit of damage here, but you know, both players are like, fairly patient. Yeah, I mean, we're actually, uh, like, as you said, we're seeing a bit of like a, a, a more defensive game plan for both of them, actually, where they are just, they're slowly right down. They're kind of taking some time to kind of think about their positioning, think about what moves they're throwing out and you know, kind of when to throw them out as well. Like, even with uh, Mokro, obviously, we're seeing that kind of, that just slowing down, like, standing there, reflecting away the grenades, which, again, was so useful in that game one where, like, Mokro got really overwhelmed by it entirely. And now, I mean, you could just do that. You find your opening, you strike the hardest that you can, and that forward air is going to take away the stock. Beautiful stuff coming out from Mokro, man. And the same thing he did for the start of game two. Could this be a repeat of game two? We'll have to see, man. It's all up to Bear. And the way he's using these side beats, man. Oh, my God. It might just end in Mokra's favor. Still, though, he's still got a chance here to make it work. And I can tell that Mokra wants another opportunity to land one of those pairs again, man. Again, just need to be able to take the stock away without using any of those Wonder Wings, which is tougher said than us. You know, like, honestly, I mean, even that Wonder Wing, they're not taken down, which means we're down, down to three uses of it. And that's not easy. Not easy at all, Smart. And still, um, you know, Mokra, I love it, he's taking his time here. He's not committing too much of these options. Holding that shield when he can. Look at this, the patience coming out from him. Oh, okay. yeah, dodgy. Yeah, he tries escaping, but that dash like is going to be able to take it from there. Beautiful stuff from him. Okay, it suddenly is open up here. You know, Bear getting a second lease of life, and again, we've just slowed it right down. We're just playing the zoning game, but I do love that Mokro is using those fireballs a bit more than we've ever seen before in previous games. You know, just to battle away at these other projectiles that are coming his way. So it's really, really nice stuff. And then, of course, the extensions there into the upbeat. It's not going to be enough to take the stock just yet, but 88%. I mean, that is no small number, Wrecker. Yeah, harassing that shield as much as he can and using the Wonder Wing to get back to center stage here. Um, 
you know, I think we were talking about how, you know, how he gets a bit hasty with these Wonder Wings, and I have to agree, but, you know, I like the uses there to, you know, try and force back that center stage, but he's got a bomb in hand, and, oh, I love the dash back to, you know, give him more time to react to Wonder Wing, have that shield out ready, that shield looking small, I don't think he can take another one, he has to be a bit more careful now. Oh, that was scary, scary stuff there, literally only narrowly avoiding that Wonder Wing, but Marco still looking quite healthy here. And I mean, yeah, that up smash is just going to get punished as hard as possible. You cannot mess with Mario's forward smash there. And Bear, you've got to get the stock early, man. You cannot be taking too much damage. That Wonder Wing there, you can just get shielded. I mean, it is obviously really, really good if you drop your shield too early because it's got a very a long-lasting active frames. But equally, you can just shield the entire thing. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I feel like at a low perception, there's a lot of, you know, it's a lot less risky. You're not only taking too much damage, I say, but 65% is still a decent bit of damage. That mock can work with, we've seen multiple times before, him landing these those up tilts, those up airs, you know, near the ledge and just finishing things off very early with a forward air. We used to say it won't happen again here on this final stop of this game three. This is still so possible for both players here. Obviously, Bear got a little bit of a hill to climb. But a character like Banjo can do it very, very easily. Just gonna be careful with that uh, Beagle Buster there. As, of course, it does leave you pretty vulnerable if you're just walking away with it. Gotta get back on stage, but these, you know, dash tags are pretty lethal. And suddenly, Bear in a really tough place. The down air does come out there for Mokra. Just this is scary stuff now with triple digits on the uh, table. Something like an arm smash could certainly take it away. Yeah, and I love it. He's using the grenades against Bear as well, man. The side from the cover the platform. And that Mokra is on his game right now. 145 onto Bear. Could he do it? We'll have to see. He's stuck in the air though, narrowly dodging that Wonder Wing. And Bear's got one more in the arsenal, but the ledge from back air is going to be enough. And a beautiful pop off coming out for Mokra, man. Taking it back there. Look at that beauty. That's <laughs> and the boys running up as well to support. I mean, what a set from these two players. To go one game down and just to lock in like that afterwards, Mokka yes. just showing why he's on this stream right now, why he's up there in the big leagues, why he's getting these wins right now. To be able to just like still put that aside, to learn from it and then play around it. I mean, his adaptations, his changes that he made to his game plan after was so oh, good. 100%, you know, you can talk about so many things here. From the punishes, he started getting so many good punishes. Like the focus, for example, the, fo the spikes off stage, like the forward smash we saw on that set. And also on top of that, you know, the, the way he was handling the, the, the bombs coming out from Banjo, he was able to cape them.